holes and threads in Fusion 360. And we've played with them a little bit before, but let's go a little bit more in detail. And so let's start by creating a bolt and a nut with threads on it. So let's create a sketch on this top face. And let's go to our polygon tool. And we're going to select a circumscribed polygon. And I want to tell it to be one inch from the center. And then I'm going to make sure I tell one of the sides to be horizontal or vertical. I'm going to right click and hit OK. Now that I got a fully constrained sketch, I'm going to go ahead and finish it. And I'm going to extrude it up, let's say 0.8 inches. And hit OK. And then I want to start another sketch on the top face here. And let's tell this circle to have a diameter of one inch. And you might think to yourself, well, if this was one inch and this was one inch, how is this twice as big? Well, if we go back to that previous sketch real quick, you'll see that it doesn't measure across the entire thing. It's only measuring from the center to the edge. And so it's twice as big. But now that we got that circle drawn with a one inch diameter, I'm going to go ahead and extrude. And I'm going to extrude it three inches and hit OK. And so you're starting to see the bolt shape. But let's go ahead and add some threads to this. And so we're going to go to create a thread. And let's click on this face here. And let's see, size one inch, one eighth UNC. Actually, this is probably a good place to go to. Make sure you have one dash eight UNC selected. And let's hit OK. And if you look, it sort of has threads, but, but there aren't really details noticeable here. And so actually it's because we forgot to hit a button. So let's go back to this thread and go to edit feature. And let's make sure we click the modeled button and hit OK. And now when you take a look at it, you're going to see all the details that go into this thread. And so what does that 1-8 UNC mean? Well, UNC stands for Unified National Course. So coarse threads are, of course, as opposed to fine or very sharp threads. The 1-8, the 1 comes from the 1 inch, the 1 inch diameter of the circle that we extruded upwards. I'd have to change this diameter here in order to give myself another option to start with other than 1. And what about the 8? What does that stand for? What it stands for is it's saying every inch, eight threads goes by. And so since this was three inches, if you were to take the time to count it, you should get 24 threads all the way to the top. And so eight threads per inch. And that knowledge is going to come in handy in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and start on our bolt now. So I'm going to start a new sketch on this top base here. And I'm actually going to hit P on my keyboard, and I'm going to project this face down here and hit OK. Now, it did also try and project this circle, which isn't exactly a circle you may notice. It's getting that top face at the end of that thread there. We don't actually want to utilize that. The good news is, is the circle we're going to draw for the hole is actually a little bit bigger than this, so we can actually ignore that piece. And so I'm going to go to my circle tool. I'm going to go to my origin. And I'm going to tell this to have a diameter of one, just like before, and hit enter. And you'll notice, like I said, it is just a little bit bigger than that face, which is very useful. And I'm going to finish my sketch. And I want to extrude this shape, not get these two shapes here in the middle. I want to extrude this just like before, 0.8 inches. And actually, I want to make sure I don't select a new body, but rather new component, and hit OK. And let's go ahead and change the name of this component to nut and hit enter. And now that I think about it, this first body, I didn't actually make a component. We can't go back and tell it to be a component after the fact. You can only do it while you're doing the first extrusion. So if I want to make it a component now, that's no big deal. I just find that body here and I'm going to right click and go to create components from bodies. And you can see now it's its own component as well. And it's out of order, but that's no big deal. Let's go ahead and change this one to bolt and hit enter. And then I want to ground the nut. So you can't actually see it. It's above my screen right now, but I right click on nut and it's 
up here, promise, just keep going up and you'll find ground. And then when it's grounded, we can continue. And the next thing I want to do is I want to thread this bolt as well. So I'm going to go to create thread. I'm going to select this face. And once again, I want it to be 1 8 UNC. And yes, it is very important that it does match the other one. And this time I'm going to make sure I hit modeled before I go and hit OK. And so these threads have to match and it should be very clear why. Hopefully by the end of this demonstration, it will be very clear. But then the next thing I want to do is I want to create a joint between these two shapes. And so let's try an as-built joint. We're going to go to Assemble, As-Built Joint. I want to select both of these components. And I'm going to change this from a rigid to a cylindrical. And I want it to be centered right in the middle of this shape here. And you can see it, well, it's going to spin as it slides up and down, which is what you'd want it to do for a bolt. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go find my joint. I'm going to find this cylindrical joint. And I want to click on this orange button that allows me to edit joint limits. I don't want to actually add a joint limit to its rotation. I want it to spin from 0 to 360. I don't want to have it a minimum or a maximum there. But for the slide, I actually do. I want it to go down but not up let's see I, I would assume down is negative or minimum but sometimes it's backwards let's play around with it let's see if what happens if i type in negative three it goes down and if it was reversed then i would just go the other way but then i want the maximum to be of course zero i don't want to give it a rest because i don't want it to spring back up but this is how i want it to go while it's on its slide and then if i switch to rotate i want it to spin around and that's perfect and so now it can spin around and go up and down. And you'll notice whenever I was doing the animation, it was moving the nut. But since I grounded the nut, it's not actually able to move outside of that animation. So I have to move the bolt itself. But I want it to move correctly. Obviously, it's not going to slide up and down and barely twist. It's If you've ever played with a bolt and a nut before, you know you have to spin it and it slowly goes in. And so the question is, well, how much? I'm going to go ahead and click Revert Position. And let's go back to assemble and let's create what we call a motion link. And what joint would I like to use? Well, I like to use this cylindrical. Now it usually asks for a second joint, but in this case, because this joint has two different joints you know, sort of embedded within it, we can actually go to link with same joint. In other words, I want it to rotate as it moves. And how do I want it to rotate as it moves? Well, the way a bolt works is every time it spins around, it goes up one thread. And if you think about it, this makes way too much sense. So I hit OK. I'm going to go back in and edit it in a second. As it spins around one time, it slides up this sort of spiral incline one at a time. And hopefully that should be very obvious to you. But again, if it's not, hopefully by the end of this, it will be very obvious. So I'm going to go back to this motion link. I want to keep the angle at 360 degrees, but how far do I want it to go? Well, you may recall earlier where we said there were eight threads per inch, which is very important. That means every inch there are eight threads. So how far does it travel every time it spins? Well, it has to spin eight times to go one inch. In other words, it has to go one eighth of an inch to rotate once. If I'd animate, it's kind of hard to see from this but if I hit OK and I play with it, you'll see it start to rise slowly as I spin it. And it's still not quite the best example. I'm going to go ahead and hit revert. So let's see if we can't make it an even better example. Let's go ahead and start a sketch right here. Actually, before I do, I'm going to activate my nut. So I don't want to mess with the bolt at all. And then I want to start a sketch on this face. And I don't really care. I'm just going to draw a rectangle and hit finish sketch, hit my home button. And I want to extrude this shape just to cut a small portion of this nut here. And I don't want to cut the bolt. And that's actually why I tried to activate the nut so that I didn't mess with the bolt. It looks like that doesn't work. That's okay. We have a fallback. I'm going to change objects to cut and I want to turn off my bolt body so that I'm only cutting through the nut. And I just want to be able to see inside the threads just a little bit and hit OK. 
I'm going to go and activate the entire file again. And so now when you see it rotating, you'll see it start to go up where the threads match as it raises through. But even still, it's still kind of hard to see what's going on here. So let's see if we can't make it even more clear. So I'm going to go ahead and hit revert position and I'm going to edit this a little bit more. I'm going to start a sketch on the side of this bolt and I want to draw myself a rectangle that starts on this edge and comes up all the way to the top of our bolt. And let's just go a little bit past the bolt. And it doesn't need to be very wide, so let's make it actually a little bit thinner. Very thin little rectangle there, but it needs to be centered really. And I'm going to hit finish sketch, and I want to extrude cut this rectangle into my shape. I don't want it to go very far, just not even 0 0.7, 0 0.6 is probably enough. Just that little tiny cut, and hit OK. And so now if we revolve it, you can see it spin as it rises. And we can actually do better than that. I'm going to go ahead and revert it again. And let's create a pattern, specifically a circular pattern. I'm going to make sure features is selected. And the axis I'm going to select is, well, uh, any circle will do, I suppose. So let's see if I select this one as my axis. What feature do I want to select? This feature down here and then hit OK. And you can see what we've done is we cut up that hole in three places now. So now when we spin it, you can see it raise up and you can see the threads specifically go through the threads of the nuts, the threads of the bolt. You can see them going through the threads of the nut. You can see it rising slowly. It's a little bit more clear of how this works. And so how many times do I have to spin this around before it goes up one inch? The answer is eight times because the distance between two threads is 0.125 inches. And actually, if we were to go back and change our very first thread, let's see here, let's change our very first thread to instead of one eighth, let's make it one twelfth and hit okay. Let's see what that does to our file. You can see what it did was it made more threads in the same area. So now there's 12 threads per inch. And so if I spin it now, it doesn't really make any sense. If I revert it and I start spinning it the first time, you'll see that it doesn't really go through the way it's supposed to. It's actually cutting through our threads. This bolt would not fit in this nut. It would get stuck almost immediately. And so how would I fix this? Well, then I'd go to this thread for our nut here. And I tell this to also be 1 12th and hit OK. And you see now they match. Now the threads are the same size, but it's still going into it. Well, why? Well, that's because of the motion that we set. We told this to go up 1 8th of an inch every time the bolt spun once. And so if we then change our motion link here to be instead of 1 8th to be 1 over 12 and hit OK. Now when we spin it, you'll see that it again is obeying the laws of physics and I'm having a hard time getting the whole thing into view, but you'll see that now it's going up the way it was intended to. It's spinning, it fits, it works together. And so now I have to spin this thing 12 times before it rises one inch. But let's go ahead and save this as what? Working bolt and nut. We're saving it into our drawing sheets folder because, well, like I said, this hopefully this understanding of bolts and nuts will help us understand the next part of our drawing sheet lessons. Let's go ahead and hit save. But now that I think on it, the name drawing sheets for this folder isn't a very good name if we're also including bolts and threads and holes. And so let's let's go ahead and change that name. Let's go back to engineering lessons. And let's edit this name drawing sheets. We're going to go to rename. And in the and in the beginning, I'm going to add holes, comma, threads, comma, and, and then leave drawing sheets. So holes, threads, and drawing sheets, and hit enter. And so now we should have a new name for this folder and a new file called working bolt nut that actually works and feel free to play with it a little bit.